Yeah, come on, that's lobby. <laughs> lobby for your lobby gobblers. Here. <laughs> Right, for today's video, it's a little bit different than what I imagined I was going to do, but we're in Greater Manchester, um, really it used to be part of Lancashire, but we're near Rochdale, and we're going to the village of Wardle, and we're going to go up above Wardle to this water grove reservoir. Now, today it's a lovely place to go and have a walk, and a beautiful surrounding countryside, but once it was a thriving woolen and cotton uh, mill village, there was at least three mills here, there was Water Grove Mill, there was Rhodes Mill, and there was Alder Bank Mill. <laughs> I knew I'd get there. But it wasn't just um, there wasn't just mills, there was coal pits, there was lots of little collieries up there as well. Um, and a very, I wouldn't say a famous road, it could have been as famous as Rulimore Road, but it was a very important road, and that's what we're going to follow. Now when I went up, the intention was to go up to the, up to the reservoir, and then had found a coal outcrop because there'd been a drought. And because there was a drought, the water level was really down and Ben found a coal outcrop round about here. So I went to investigate that. Then the idea was to follow the road, the old Ramsden Road, which used to come right through the middle of the reservoir, all the way up and up to Walnut Colliery, then over the top and then down towards Fowl Clough Colliery. But I'll just show you something. Uh, this is a fantastic resource that's on the uh, the National Library of Scotland uh, and they do it on the, the first ordnance survey sheet as well as the 25 inch. Now this is the, the old village of Watergrove. We've got Watergrove Mill there right in the middle that was a centrepiece of the village. Then there's Alderbank Mill there and there's Rhodes Mill um, and now they're kind of underwater to say the least. And if you see this row here, Boar's Row, which is quite interesting because I did a video about two years ago, a bait time, um, one of my bait time videos about colliers that have met here and then the, there'd been an attempted murder. They got themselves full of drink and it looks like they'd worked up at uh, Walnut Colliery. Now I say this is a fantastic resource because let me just zoom, alter this and we get Google Earth underneath it so you can see exactly where the village was and where it now lies and where the road runs right through the reservoir. Isn't that fantastic? Now, what we're particularly looking at today for a start, the outcrop that Ben found is here. And we can see now that is well and truly under the reservoir, but it came to daylight. What is it? Well, we think we found out part of that problem. Um, anyway, watch on and I'll show you the rest of our route as we go through the video. Well, good morning from, well, I suppose you'd call it Greater Manchester these days. We're at Wardle. Because of the, the drought, although I can't still believe that it's empty, the reservoir, uh, you know, it's revealing a lot of its old secrets. Now, it was cotton, wool, and coal mining. There was lots of pits up here. And in the background, you can see where Brown Wardle Hill was, Middle Hill, and then we go, we go across to Rough Hill. And it's a really ancient sort of area for mining. Ben has been picking up ironstone from uh, the back of Brown Wardle. Coal mining on Brown Wardle is traceable back for hundreds upon hundreds of years. And also we believe that perhaps they were getting iron from there. Say, Ben has got iron ore from there and he's roasted it and he has made some small pieces of metal out of it. But what Ben turned up the other day while he was rooting around the reservoir, is the fact that the village is appearing again, but he also found a coal outcrop, and that's what I've come to look at today, as well as getting on the bike and going up towards the old foul clough collieries right over the top of Rough Hill. So let's have a look at this coal outcrop. And you might think, well, maybe it's not a lot to get excited about. But I think it's exciting. But which coal seam is it? 
Well, if you look on the geological survey map, the, the larger edition, and they're not 100% accurate, you know what I mean? Um, we're just at the edge of the reservoir, the embankment walls there, and it shows the, the lower foot and the basset cropping out in this area. And in the clough beside us, Haycliffe Colliery were at the lower foot mine. The lower foot was quite extensively worked around here at the turn of the, the, 19th, the 20th century and just before. Rhodes Colliery up in the village there, that extensively worked, extensively worked the lower foot. Um, and it was only about nine, 10 inch thick. So they were desperate for the coal. Uh, and it was used for the mill, but Haycliffe is just in the clough behind us. And we do have a seam section for that. And it shows, interestingly, above the coal, there's nine, 10 inch of coal, shale, and then there's a six inch band of ironstone. And then you go another band of sort of black stone, and then another band of ironstone, four inches. So within six feet, you've got a foot of coal, well, 10 inch of coal, and nearly a foot of ironstone as well. So it would have been worth getting in ancient days with that ironstone. But this is a, so this is possibly either the lower foot or the basset, I can't tell you really, to be honest with you. And, and Ben thinks the crop edge of the floor is just here and he thinks he's picked some iron stones out of that. So, a dry summer, but there is at least one benefit, seeing things from the past here. We see clearly here the, the floor to the coal seam and you can see how red it is showing the iron content. The crop edge. The crop edge of the coal here. And then we've got the roof shale coming in here. So what then are our conclusions? Well, from the research we've done, and the Coal Authority don't have a great deal on this particular area, but it, it is obvious that this is the lower foot mine, and it's near the hold Hay Clough Colliery. Now, Hay Clough Colliery uh, was worked in the 20th century, and this whole other working is well before. We can see our pit heap there, which is marked in black, uh, and the old, old the Hay Clough is below. And on some of the plans of the Hay Clough Colliery, it says old workings but we don't know what those old workings are from. And we can see the pit is in two distinct halves uh, and we've got them marked on there. Now the upper part, again, that's gonna be holding in to where our mystery heap is, but the purple one below, there might be a chance that there's still some remains left of the old hay clough main drift there. So the next time I'm up, that's where I'm gonna to head to. But at least we've solved it. We're in the lower foot mine, um, Again, an unknown colliery for the time being, but we know it's next to the Hayclough colliery.
Now the main mining family on the Walsden side were the Hagues and there's mining leases going back certainly to uh, it, the 1790s with the Hagues. But who were the Hagues? Well there's a wealth of information on the Hagues and I've got a lot of this from the Walsden Roots web, uh, website and uh, if you're interested in that kind of history I suggest you really do look at it. Now the Hagues they mined coal up Fowl Clough and all along Rough Hill and that's where I'm going trying to look at today. So the first pit we're going to get to is Walnook which was run by the Rochdale Lord of the Manor, James Dearden. There's not a lot of history on Walnook I'm afraid although there's certainly a lot of remains up there. Then I'm going to go over the hill, follow the Fowl Clough, Old Fowl Clough Coal Road down to Coolham to the community basically that the Hagues lived in and built and that was a small mining community there up until the 1890s when Fowl Clough Colliery finally closed. And we're going to follow the road, Ramsden Road, up out the reservoir and there's lots on this road to see. Um, like I say, because of the weather I couldn't really do the video proper so it's a great excuse to come back. And we follow the road right the way up past the quarries and all along here you see when we get uh, Desi up You'll see a load of pit heaps. These, this is Walnut Colliery from when it was working the um, the lower foot mine, um, the turn of the 1900s. But the old Walnut Colliery goes right back to at least 1820, and it's up here. And we've got a little bit of footage, not more, not much drone footage. Again, we need to come back, and the upper mountain mine is up here, and it looks to me, as we'll see when we get there, there's been an incline up. Anyway. We follow the road, oh just one more thing, we will also find the Long Causeway which is a really really old pack horse route that Michael Russell's had a lot to do in maintaining um, so we can still see that, he's also done a lot with the old Fowl Clough Coal Road as well that runs up past Walnook, it isn't the best road I'll tell you. So our idea then is to go across Rough Hill, follow the old Fowl Clough Road down towards this area here, the the abandoned Ramsden Reservoir, um, again a really ancient area possibly for iron mining and we're going to see where the ancient, uh, well the old village was with the Moorcock Inn, we're going to sit there although the weather wasn't great, we didn't get a chance to have a proper look at Coolham and I'm afraid by the time I got to Fowl Clough Colliery the weather was really filthy, it was awful so we've just got a few photographs but it's an excellent excuse to come back again and it's part and parcel of the the work i've been doing uh, published on facebook of the histories of the spotland area um, and the and walsden area going right back well really back to the 1200s now then foul clough colliery is really important again it ran for lots of years but let me just show you something else as well we can go right back to the 1844 map, 1844 to 1850. Again, you've still got this fantastic resource. You can see when the first edition was done, Watergrove didn't really uh, exist very much. It, it came about after that. But we've got Alder Bank Mill that's well established. Well, let's just have a look further up. Here, see, we've got Walnut Colliery well established that's up at the upper mountain and lower mountain and all these coal pits along here now it ran from about 1820 at least and i think maybe the original into the lower mountain was perhaps down here as well but again we've got an awful lot more work to do up here but i just want to show you about foul clough a lot of people think that foul clough was just where it was behind coolum but the original colliery and it's on the map of 1820 was actually here as well let me just zoom out a little bit. It existed in many guises. I'm sorry it's not the best. It was up near the Deacon Pasture Wall. And can you see these reservoirs that, that are associated with it and all the leets that are going round the hill? Providing water, I take it, for the steam engines. Can you see them? Now, they need an awful lot of investigation. So the original Fowl Clough, was actually up here and we have got um, some surprising information that's come about that I'm going to write down on, on Facebook. That's where the, the pit is today that we know about. So anyway, there we are. This is our destination. But sadly, as I said, um, the weather was inclement so we need to come back again at another time.
it's reasonable to ask, does the wind ever go away? But we're up now at the Long Causeway and that's a nice little dedication to Michael Russell. Uh, Michael's a, a friend of our Facebook group and he's done a lot of work behind this. So the Long Causeway was one of the uh, many Packhorse routes, the most famous obviously also, well, equally as famous, being Limer's Gate. And we're going to ex explore that a bit more when we talk about Elsa Fusser with our story with Sal Madge. This is obviously the main way into the upper mountain up at Walnook. Possibly again being a horse road. Uh, again we've got the wind so I can't do a great deal of commentary and we can't get Desi up. We turn around you can see what an isolated spot it is. Looking back there. And if we look from the uh, lower mountain drifts at the bottom, you can see there seems to be an incline coming up. I've never seen it on any map at all but there's definitely an incline there coming up. A lot of this here has been washed out and right down across the Manchester Plain you can just see in the distance see the skyscrapers of the city. Well, I'm just above the old Rams and Reservoir now that's all sort of all drained and I've overshot Coolham and Moorcock, which is where the, the Higgs was sort of like based. Uh, I've come to try and find a bit of shelter because it hasn't half come on squalling. So I'll go back as soon as the rain finishes. But the Fowlclough Coal Road coming across from Walnook uh, right across to the top isn't for the faint hearted. It kind of disappears, you know what I mean? <laughs> a bit of fun. Not looking forward to going back. So behind us, this is where the vicarage, according to the map I've got, it's the first time I've been over here, was the vicarage and the Moorcock. The Moorcock was a pub. And you know there's quite a few pubs around here called the Moorcock, the notorious one, especially on Ruling Moor Road. But I think this could be quite as wild at times. In fact, Falclough Colliery itself could have possibly had the nickname of the Moorcock because there was a newspaper report of the manager here. Forget the date, I can look it up at home. And and he actually he blew his brains out and it said he was from the Moorcock Colliery. Um, and apparently he got in trouble with the inspector. It, this, this happens, you know, oh, I want this doing, I want that doing. And he got his cell all depressed and he booked his cell into a, a pub over in Burnley. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, his wife, he stayed with him a day and then the next day the landlord found him and he'd, uh, he'd shot his cell. So that was really sad, wasn't it? I'll look into that a bit more and put the name up but this is where the Moorcock was uh, and this is really where was the hive of activity this colliery ran from the late 1700s until at least what was it the 1890s I can't give you the exact date off the top of my head it worked in different areas it was at the top of the hill for a start and then finally it, it was down near here where it stayed and was established for a long long time
Dile 